Well, Diana said, we are feeling Zionism. You're right, you're feeling it, because the only place in the Middle East where Arabs are free is Israel. <laughs> and so the freedom that you have, Diana, is because the only country in the Middle East where there is freedom is the state of Israel from which you benefit and you should be thankful for it. I, I'm not grateful at all. Because the only, the, only country, country. the only country in the Middle East where Arabs can elect their officials, be elected, be judges at the Supreme Court, be president of a university, the only free country in the Middle East is Israel. Dan, do you want to respond to that? I find it staggering that the gentleman to my right is telling the Palestinian citizen of Israel how she is experiencing the reality under which she lives. It's, it's a staggering moment for me. Now, you know, there were different strands to Zionism, okay? There was a cultural Zionism, there was a binational Zionism. This could have gone in different directions. From the perspective of 2024, 75 plus years in, the idea that this is just something benign doesn't match with the reality that has been lived. Now, I would say it's clear what this has meant for Palestinians. But I would argue it's not doing what was written on the tin for Jews either. I don't think either Israeli Jewish or global Jewish safety is best served by the actions we see day in, day out in Gaza. Penny, would you like to respond to what you've heard from the panel, please? I, I think there's a misunderstanding here. There is a separation between Israel and the West Bank, Israel and the occupied territory largely populated by the Palestinians uh, and the state of Israel. In Israel itself, there is a rule of law. There is generally equality between the Jews and the Arabs, and you're misrepresenting it when you say that they are persecuted, and he's damn right in what he says, that all the Arab states are dictatorships which do not allow their citizens any freedom, and Israeli Arabs enjoy most of the rights. They may be discriminated against in certain things, but they may, may enjoy certain rights which Jews do not have, for instance, not serving three years, wasting three years in the army, for example. Israeli Arabs don't yeah, do we that. Don't, we don't want yeah, to no, do no, 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 yes. it's, it's fine. Yes. I'm fine. Sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure most Palestinians yeah. are desperate to serve in yeah. the Israeli military yeah. right now. I'm sure. I'm, no, I'm sure Thank you're you right. Thank you for leaving but us from do. Do. should some be do. in pre-1967 Zionism and Israel. It was not a colonial enterprise. In the West Bank, there is a colonizing and colonial framework, which is even apartheid-like uh, in its actual workings. But in pre-1967 Israel, that was not the case. And for the first hundred years or so of Zionism, it wasn't a colonial venture. It wasn't I, a venture I, of an extension Benny. of an imperial. Let me just define colonialism since you're so okay. busy defining genocide. Imperialism and colonialism were matched together in which an imperial an empire sent its children to dominate and take over a third world country and exploit that, its riches not and South its Africa. people. This is not what Israel did until 1967. Emmanuel, do you agree with Benny that there is a colonial aspect and apartheid-like aspect to the occupied West Bank? No. Uh, Zionism is a national liberation movement that freed its land from Arab Muslim colonialism. How do you think Islam expanded itself from the Arab Peninsula to Indonesia, from Indonesia to Morocco? Not from the Holy Spirit. This was conquest and colonialism. Okay, we are out of